Three rings provide a remarkable record of the past. When studied carefully, they can provide information about many kinds of past events, including floods, earthquakes, insect attacks, droughts, and temperature changes. In this video, I focus mainly on how the study of tree rings provides information on how our climate has changed in the past. First, a little bit about how tree rings develop in the mid and high latitudes where the seasons are distinct. As a tree grows, it adds wood just inside the bark of the tree. In the spring and summer, as the temperature rises, the new growth is called early wood. Early wood consists of large, porous cells that are light in color. When the temperature starts to drop, growth slows down and the tree produces smaller, denser cells that form late wood that is dark in color. The late wood is what gives the tree its strength, while the early wood is what allows the tree to draw its moisture and nutrients from the soil. Each early wood and late wood ring represents one year of growth. The thickness of the ring tells us if that year was a good growth year with optimum temperature and moisture or a bad growth year with lower temperatures or less precipitation. The number of rings from the center to the bark tells us how old the tree is. Some tree species such as balsam fir Quaking aspen and black cherry are very sensitive to temperature, so the width of their rings can tell us a lot about how temperatures have changed in the past. Other, other tree species such as redwoods, eucalyptus, and willow trees are very sensitive to precipitation levels, so their ring widths can tell us when droughts have occurred in the past. In practice, foresters and scientists obtain tree ring samples from living trees by using a device called an increment borer, like the one shown in the picture on the left. The borer can be used to extract a core sample like the one shown on the right. After the core sample is removed from the tree, a sealant is applied to the bark and the tree will continue to grow essentially unaffected by the core sample removal process. The age of the tree that yielded the core sample can be determined just by counting the number of rings. Scientists who are interested in using tree ring core samples to determine past climate generally will obtain core samples from many trees from a fairly large area to ensure that their results are not being skewed by local conditions. Scientists have two different ways to determine past temperature from tree rings. One way is simply to measure the widths of the tree rings. These measurements alone provide only a relative indication of past temperatures. However, if actual temperature measurements are available, from one or more weather stations close to the area from where the tree ring cores were obtained, then these can be used to calibrate width measurements with actual temperatures for at least the most recent ring widths. If the trees from which the core samples were obtained are very old trees, they then can be used to provide temperature proxies going back several centuries. A second method that's used to determine past temperatures from tree rings is the measurement of stable isotope ratios in the wood of the tree rings. Tree ring wood contains the elements carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. The carbon comes from the carbon dioxide that the tree sequesters during photosynthesis. The oxygen in the tree ring wood comes from both the carbon dioxide and from the water that the tree absorbs, while the hydrogen comes only from the absorbed water. In nature, most oxygen atom nuclei contain eight protons and eight neutrons. We call that oxygen 16, but about two tenths of a percent of oxygen nuclei contain eight protons and 10 neutrons. That's called oxygen 18. Likewise, most carbon nuclei contain six protons and six neutrons. 
That's called carbon-12. But a small percentage have, proton, have six protons and seven neutrons. That's carbon-13. Similarly, most hydrogen nuclei contain just a single proton, but a few contain a proton and a neutron, and that's called deuterium. Pioneering work by Leona Marshall Libby and L.J. Pandolfi at UCLA showed that the oxygen 18 to oxygen 16 ratio, the carbon 13 to carbon 12 ratio, and the deuterium to hydrogen ratio in the wood of tree rings depends on the air temperature during the time that the tree ring was being formed. So by comparing these stable isotope ratios with temperature measurements from a nearby weather station, Libby and Pandolfi were able to calibrate their tree ring thermometer for the tree that they were studying. Measuring stable isotope ratios from tree rings requires significantly more work than just measuring the width of the tree rings. However, reliable temperature measurements from tree ring widths is only possible for trees whose growth is determined mainly by temperature and not by precipitation. On the other hand, the stable isotope ratio measurements don't have that restriction since the carbon-13 to carbon-12 ratio is not affected by precipitation. Most trees live less than a thousand years, but climate scientists would like temperature information that extends much further back in time. Fortunately, often they can find well-preserved, older, dead trees in the same area as living trees they are studying. By matching the tree ring patterns from these nearby relic or dead trees, scientists have been able to obtain temperature information that extends back several thousand years in time. This image shows a typical temperature reconstruction obtained by matching tree ring and other proxy temperature data to actual temperature measurements obtained with thermometers. While the thermometer data goes back only a little over 100 years, the proxy data shown in the figure goes back a full thousand years. From this figure, we can see clearly how temperatures have increased since the start of the Industrial Revolution. Finally, I want to show you this picture of tree rings from a recent Washington Post article about data that Dr. Kiyomi Marino of the University of Arizona obtained recently from a tree on Mount Bigelow in Arizona. From the image, we can compare the width of the 2021 and 2022 tree, tree rings with the 2023 tree ring. We know that 2023 has been the warm, warmest year on record since at least the start of the Industrial Revolution and perhaps for much longer. The 2023 tree ring shows the impact that this hot weather has had on this tree. There has been little new tree growth this year compared to 2021 and 2022, and essentially no late wood has formed. Clearly the hot weather has had an impact, and that impact does not bode well since it means that this tree has taken very little new carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere this year. I hope that you have found this video informative. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments section, and I will do my best to respond. Thanks again for watching, and if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button.